Scott Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. I am. And uh, by the way, so is Keith, a little bloated from the weekend. The other five dreaded days of the month. What's going on there? Yes, yes, yeah. that's exactly that what, it what it is. Yeah, hey, wow. Yeah, that and uh, you know, Shoot. too much beer. Just too know, much beer. Left me bloated over the weekend. Yeah, yeah you'd, a lot of salt intake to yes. keep that water. Yeah. Looks like <laughs> it's like you've got an entire lake uh, stored up inside does it? you. Yeah, it, it, does. Does. it does. It does. It does. It's I don't a... mean to be rude, but <laughs> I'm going to anyway, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So uh, welcome to uh, Jeffy. Uh, this morning, start out with the, uh, well, we got all kinds of great stuff for you. And, you know, of course, the uh, perennial aggravating stuff as well. Um, oh, yeah. But we got a, pack, a new Pat Gray bingo card today. Uh, it starts out in the upper left hand corner with numbers. The numbers don't lie. <laughs> don't lie. Go. The numbers don't lie. So great. No, they don't. When you got 141 and two thirds chance. That doesn't lie. You can't. No. You can't make that up. No, it does. You just not. can't. Uh, the next square. Follow the science. Where your grandma stay. <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. No, we have not. Uh, then we've got this. And this guy's a liar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeffy saying that hurts. That hurts. Liz. Uh, I'm. Oh, okay. L- Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren. Warren. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna get me a beer. <laughs> just the worst. Okay. Uh, our next square, mostly peaceful, followed by old ass bum in it. <laughs> the old ass <laughs> bum in there. Uh, Jeffy saying, "Amen." Mm-hmm. That's a moo point, which is great. Another Jeffy, my friend. <laughs> I'll tell you that, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Al Sharpton. I'm. I'm not sure if I. Uh, let's see. This is the Chipotle. Chipotle. Yeah. I don't know if I have that anymore. Sharp. Yeah, it's probably in one of the montages. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. But he says, Chipotle. So it's him saying it. We'll find it. Uh, Pat Pimps, Kexi. I mean, that's a given. <laughs> that's a, like a free square. What do you mean? That hardly ever happens. <laughs> By the way, Kexi.com, if you want the most delicious cookie in the world. Doesn't count now, though. No, that it's does inside, not count. We're right inside now. the explanation no. of the bingo card. Right. But super delicious cookies, um, and we yeah. have now we have now hired nine people, and they've got this thing rolling really well, so that you don't have to wait um, a week sometimes for your cookies. They get there quickly. Well, that's kind of nice. That's kind of a good plan, actually. Yeah, I think it is. Most people, when they you know want a product, mm-hmm. they want don't want to wait. Yeah, that's true. I think I, I think that is. Have you? Do you Generally have the? Do, have you? Are you looking into perhaps uh, investing into Kexi drones, and uh, dropping those bad boys? You know, maybe just starting off here in the DFW area with the sure. Kexi cookie drones. And- yeah, that that'll come any time now. Okay. Good. Yeah, really, really close okay, to that. Uh, our next square is mystery. Uh, the only thing less popular than putting money into banks mm-hmm. is putting money oh. into the auto industry. That's fairly typical of mm-hmm. the way that uh, Danes have. Uh, Punched above their weight. Punched uh, above their weight. International <laughs> affairs. Okay, punch. Yep, uh, I've said this before, but I want to repeat: Norway punches above its weight. They do. They punch uh, we above have their weight. Uh, no stronger ally than, than uh, the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Uh, they consistently Strong ally. punch above their weight. <laughs> Ireland punches above its weight. Uh, Ireland, it's a small country. Mm-hmm. The Philippines is not the largest of countries. No, but I bet you that uh, they. Uh, in they using a, a phrase uh, from boxing, punches above its weight. Sure. Okay. So we've got that. I'm all, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go out on a limb here right mm-hmm. now. Uh, it's Monday. I don't miss that guy. No, I, I don't either. I do not miss that man. I share your lack of uh, <laughs> nostalgia over <laughs> Barack Obama. Glad the weekend is over. Uh, we got that as a square. Uh, if you love it so much, <laughs> why don't you marry it? Why don't you marry it? Dang it! Is uh, the next square. Then, of course... You look like an idiot. Exactly. Uh, the Fauci, the Anthony Fauci voice, uh, where he contradicts himself uh, every single day. We hold these. Oh, then there's uh, Biden. Uh, let's see if I could find that really quick. I, Yes. We, the people, mm-hmm. we hold these truths, etc. 
It's it sounds corny, but it's real. Yeah, it sounds really corny when you don't even know the phrase. <laughs> And he doesn't know it because that was the first time he screwed up on it. Yeah. And he just Peace. screwed up Last recently. week, right? Yeah. I think it was last week. Yes, it was. Um, next square on the uh, bottom left-hand corner. Some people call me Maurice. <laughs> Some call me the, the gangster, gangster of love. love. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, I speak <laughs> the pompadus <laughs> of love. love, whatever that means. <laughs> Nobody really knows. They actually believe Steve Miller made that up. The pompadus of love. Of love. Mm-hmm. Or misunderstood it from something else well, but, and you used know, it. When you speak it, you mm-hmm. know it. That's true. So Yes. Uh, then we got AOC. Um, um, like, like, whatever. Whatever. You know, and like, or whatever, like, just like. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Uh, then Jeffy again. My man, Lester Holt. Then there's a, so you're saying there's a chance. And uh, finally, bat crap crazy. Uh, which happens almost every day. So a lot of free squares this time. This should fill up pretty quickly, I would think. And then, of course, you call when when you've got a bingo, you know, either across, down, or diagonally. Then you give us a call at 888-900-3393, and you win $35 towards your uh, whatever you want at Pat Merch Shop underscore dot squiggly line backslash forward slash the blaze dot net squiggly line underscore org it's a weird uh, address i don't i don't know why they did it that way but uh no slash pad in there no really <laughs> rob it, anybody it, anybody yes, know what it screen. is shop dot blaze media dot com Ta-da! Slash, yeah shop dot those, those you watch yeah. <clears throat> shop blaze media dot com slash pat but if you uh that's not the one we're talking about though you, it's the I'll, pat head yeah. one uh, Keith tried to simplify it. Padheadshop.com. Padheadshop.com. You I mean, would think I'd write that down or something, but I never. We well, don't have to because you remember the squiggly lines and the <laughs> yes. dashes, so it's all good. <laughs> it's just that easy. <laughs> all right. So anyway, uh, that'll happen sometime during the course of the week. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. The number to call. Uh, also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Had the big uh, fight last night. Yeah, baby. <clears throat> which I mistakenly paid for oh dude did you buy it too well well yes but uh max bought it my my son bought it right when it first dropped on fam oh, wow. on fam Neo for uh 25 bucks and so they started at 25 yeah the very first the very first one on fam Neo dropped started at 25 okay and so he was in and then when they switched it to showtime and he was all worried that they were gonna you know Mm-hmm. Jack it back up, but anybody that got in early got in. So I mean, nice. was, it was barely worth twenty five. It wasn't worth twenty five cents, <laughs> let alone the fifty bucks yeah, I, I paid not, for it. I would it. not have paid fifty for that bad. Fifty play. bucks, and I thought there was going to be at least something exciting that would happen. Here's there. what you do, Pat. What a bore that was. Here's what you do. Whole night. Yes. Okay. Showtime had some issues with Did people they? with their app last night. Uh, yeah. A lot of people uh, unable well, to uh, get So in. did the Fanmeo uh, app. So uh, I would say that so did you. Yeah, and I they did. Said they said they gave a place where you can go and get your refund. I was asking my sons last night, what is this, uh, 2004? Why I do mean, we keep... Somebody, it keeps freezing. Oh, Fanmeo did not do that. Only, only did it, it just where my my connection was, uh, wasn't too bad. I thought it was in the Lumbee tribe. Uh, pre <laughs> six months ago, when we were still using dial-up, it was it was bad, and, yeah, and then the fights were just atrocious. It was Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco, Ocho uh, fought very first. somebody and lost. Uh, and I and I was looking. I thought that was going to be a bare knuckle fight. <laughs> that's the way it was. That's the way you, it was kind of promoted, but it was just promoted that the the, the one other guy, guy was, yeah, was a, a bare knuckle fighter. fighter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was, Hoping for the bare knuckle fight, to be honest with you. And then Logan Paul, who is the YouTuber, obnoxious YouTuber, who just does stunts and makes millions of dollars for doing it. Heck yeah. Uh, towered. I mean, just towered over. It looked like he was fighting a Lilliputian. <laughs> it, it looked like Boy, it was... Boy, just fighting the Jolly Green Giant, man. It was uh, uh, 
amazing how much bigger Logan Paul is than Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. But still, Floyd Mayweather is yes. a champion of the world. Yes, he's 44 years old, doesn't fight professionally anymore, um, but does these where he makes $100 million at, a, at, a, at an event. He's, he claims that when he fought McGregor, he made three hundred and fifty million dollars. Buy that three fifty. That's just incredible. So why wouldn't you do it? I don't know how much they rained. Uh, it rained on Floyd last night. I mean, they said that it was reported he was guaranteeing ten mil plus a cut of the ten. Box, uh, oh, he plus, claims he was making a hundred million from that plus plus a cut of the box office. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. they they were saying they under Logan. It said they claimed originally he wasn't even. His original deal wasn't even a million. And they did this thing. They did it in his stadium without a roof. So it's pouring on them half the night. It was raining uh, into the boxing ring. So they're slipping and falling all over the place while they're trying to fight. It's asinine. Just was. I I don't think that was a worthwhile event. And uh, Logan Paul went the distance with Mayweather. And would have been behind on all the scorecards, yeah. but because it was an exhibition, they didn't even declare a winner. Right. Have what that, a waste of time right, and money. That's because everybody was, you know, looking for the knockout, right? L- yes. Looking for the knockdown. Somebody had to knock him down. They didn't, get, they didn't get close to being knocked down, uh, either th- one of them, I don't think. I think there were a couple of times I think I feel like Floyd was ready to go in for the kill and then didn't. And I don't know <laughs> if that's because he's, you know, obviously getting old. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an exhibition, and and there were a couple. There were two or three really big lefts by Floyd. I thought ten years ago those would have connected, mm. but I don't know. You know, he's also never fought anybody. He never fought the Jolly Green Giant yeah. before either. <clears throat> Guy had thirty four pounds on him and a four inch reach, right? So I mean, Floyd had to get in there on him and a six inch height advantage. <laughs> but as Floyd kept saying, uh, you don't win the fight on height. See, because it rhymed. And it oh, was, okay. Yeah. All so right. uh, that'll become a staple in American society. <laughs> you don't win a fight on height. <laughs> All right. Uh, it does help, though. I mean, that's why yeah. there are weight uh, categories. That's that's why 190-pound guys don't go up against 155-pound right. guys. It's just really not fair. Although in this, one, in this particular case, it was because you got the best boxer in the world. Against a YouTube influencer, or whatever they call him. I don't know. Plus, he's fought, uh, going into this fight, a total of once and lost. Then all of a sudden, he's fighting the former champion of the world. Hmm. All right. I know. Whatever. Awesome. Good and that was his little brother is trying to angle in there, I think, yeah, to, to fight him as well. Yeah. Jake, Jake, who's actually... Uh, looked impressive in the ring in his three fights against yeah. basketball players and uh, former MMA fighters who are you know sixty three <laughs> years old now. Uh, he's he's actually got some knockout yeah, power. Yeah, he does. Looks like an actual fighter. It'd be interesting to see. Uh, and I, he's fighting an MMA guy, uh, I think, in the boxing ring soon, and uh, we'll see how that goes. But what a waste! Hope you didn't waste it yourself. <laughs> we did that for that was, you so you wouldn't I, have to. I, I had big problems uh, seeing it uh, really bad. <laughs> what happened? Um, well, I couldn't, didn't freeze couldn't, up or you yo, couldn't get man, in? I could, man, ooh, man. Really? I wish I could. Wish I could have seen huh. it. I'm just talking by, I just reading the reviews and talking about it. And, I see. You know, but I'm hmm. looking to get my refund. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, uh, 888-900-3393. If you're trying to sell your home, you know what a challenge that is. That's why you need somebody who can see you through the whole process. From start to finish, somebody who's going to give you the right advice, who has a great marketing plan, who has a great track record of selling homes really quickly and for the most amount of money. Uh, the market is changing a little bit right now. Up until recently, it's been a real seller's market. Uh, that's changing somewhat because the prices have gotten so high and uh, the there's there's not enough homes to to fill the demand. So it's changed a little bit. And that's why a great realtor is going to help you a lot right now. And these are uh, fans of the show, so you're going to have a lot in common with them to begin with. Real Estate Agents I Trust. The name really says it all. Go to realestateagentsitrust.com. You know, 
in a lot of cases, if you can get what what uh, what your house appraises for, uh, do it. Uh, yeah, this is a good time to do it. Yeah, so many people uh, have had their homes appraised and said, <laughs> oh, I, "I like the sound of that." Yeah. Now, what uh, are you going to buy? You know, I, mean, I don't it, know. It, you know, it, some people would say, "Well, you take a loan against that, uh, uh, what it's worth, and you know, put a pool in and uh, do some do some remodeling." Mm-hmm. You and could stay where you're at. But see, these are the things. Say a good realtor from like I don't know, real estate agents I trust. Dot com. That's where they would come in. Oh, they would come in. Let's, yeah. let's make, let's make all the money that. we have for you on this house and then get this cheaper house over here. You could do that. Yeah. With, maybe maybe get a lot extra for your house than you paid for it and then pay cash for the next one. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that, that be would awesome? would be nice. Then you got no house payment. That would be nice. But in Texas, you'd still have what essentially is a house payment with the property tax <laughs> they charge you. <laughs> they, they do tend Such to charge for that. Yeah, they do. Yes, and they, they do. like quite a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no income tax. Okay. Yeah. So let's Thank charge you. 80 times what everybody else charges for her property taxes. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, that works out really well. 888 Also at uh, Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, President Biden setting the stage for reparations. He uh, backs a number of components, he says, of H.R. 40, which is legislation that would create a commission to examine and develop proposals for reparations for African Americans. I just get the impression right now that this is probably going to happen. Feels like it. <clears throat> for the first time in history, when we've when this has come up, it's been outrageous and shot down immediately, and everybody says, "Ah, shut up." Um, you're not gonna. You're not going to hold people today accountable for what happened 150, 160, oh, 200 years ago. Uh, and we who would you give are. it to? We certainly are. Yes, because we've gotten to that place now. Where, yeah, yeah, you are. Because it's your fault, too. And they have they done a great job of that? Yes, they have. <laughs> of making it the current white people's problem that we actually are the ones who are still oppressing uh, all minorities. Uh, it's they've done a great job of that. Agonizing. Obama laid the groundwork, and Joe is carrying the torch. And Obama just admitted that that Biden is finishing the job that he started, which is what we've said for months now. Uh, Joe Biden is just finishing the total transformation of America. It's chilling. But Jen Psaki said that the president is supportive of the bill's funding and proposed study which he feels would be the next important step forward and something that he feels would be absolutely correct in addressing this moment in history. The bill includes authorization for the appropriation of $12 million in order to carry out the provisions. So it's $12 million just for the commission. Hmm. All right. Not bad. <clears throat> yeah, we don't. I mean, we spit at $12 million. $12 million. Nobody cares about $12 million. Why, why isn't it $120 million? Or $1.2 billion for that matter. Uh, Politico reported that Biden met on Tuesday with Congressional Black Caucus members who raised the need for the bill. He didn't disagree with what we're doing, said uh, Representative Brenda Lawrence of Michigan. He did talk about his plate being full with trying to get in- the infrastructure bill passed and that he really wanted to make sure he could get that through before he took on anything else. President's largest concern regarding the legislation is getting it through the Senate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> that may be an issue. Might. But then again, it might not be. Uh, the only way that it won't be is if Joe Manchin comes to a census. And, and Manchin has actually <clears throat> come to a census on a few things and has uh, fought the administration's efforts on a couple of issues. Uh nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Now, all of a sudden, the media is so concerned about the president's speech pattern. He's slurring his words. He seems to be in cognitive decline. Oh, I not this current president, of course, but the the previous person in office, uh, Donald J. Trump. <laughs> this is amazing. This it is, is amazing. Absolutely incredible. Trump w- had a speech the other day, and uh, they said he's slow, and it's clear that dementia is setting in. Uh, have you been watching this other guy at all? Here are some of the things that uh, Donald Trump had to say in his speech that they're so you know, concerned I've long about. I've said 
They're poly they're vicious, they're violent. Wait, what? They, in many cases, hate our country. Pause it for a second. And okay, so they're, what did he say? They're polyous? Is that, so, is he trying to say policy or? Uh, run that no, back that again. Let me see what he's saying here. You know, I've long said, they're polyous, they're vicious. Yeah, they're, they're polyous. Their yeah. polyous is vicious. They, yeah, in many Greek. cases, hate our country. <laughs> Pause and they have for bad a second. Poly- Okay, that's a Greek word. It's a Greek word. Oh, all right. Yeah, it's a Greek Polyus. word. So don't even talk to me about him being lethargic and slurring no. his words. He's he, using Greek. He's using Greek. How many Americans know Greek? Thank Not you. Not that many. Not that many. All right, let's see what Not else you have to say. Now, the bad news from our standpoint, they stick together. They don't have some of the people like we have where they go on their own and they do what they have to. They stick together. And that's the one thing they have. They stick together. But their true. policy is so bad. And uh, we're going to have a tremendous 2022, just like we did, frankly, 2020. Think of it. More votes than any sitting president in the history of the United States by far. We had a great election. Bad things happened. But we had a great election. Pause it for a second. But Wait. You, look- you had a great election? <laughs> How do you... What was great about it? If you lost... Well, you got more votes. And apparently there was corruption. Uh, what was great about it then? <laughs> we did not have a great election. We, we just didn't. Uh, all right, let's see what else he had to say. Might be a Greek our word border for that. is hmm? wide open. <laughs> Illegal Polyus. immigration Polyus. is skyrocketing at a level that we've never seen before. And this is over a period of a few months. Drugs are pouring in. Gas prices are soaring. Mm -hmm. Our industries are being pillaged by foreign cyber attacks. That's a lack of respect for our country and for our leaders. And speaking of our leaders, they're bowing down to China. America is being demeaned and humiliated on the world stage. Our freedom is being overtaken by left-wing cancel culture. And the Biden administration is pushing toxic critical race theory and illegal discrimination into our children's schools. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me, we take this? Joe Biden and the Socialist Democrats are the most radical left-wing administration in history. Even Bernie Mm -hmm. Sanders can't believe it. He said, I can't believe this happened. This is worse than I ever was. And I don't know if they even know what the hell they're signing. Somebody's drawing these documents and putting it in. It's getting signed. It's a disgrace what's happening to our country. The survival of America depends upon our ability to elect Republicans at every level, starting with the midterms next year. We have to get it done. We do. We have to get it done. We have no choice, actually. We have to get it done. Together, we're going to defund our freedoms. We have to you get just it done. Uh, take a look at what's we happening. We have to defend our our borders. We have to do all of these things. And the cancel culture, the defunding culture, the defending culture, and they defend the wrong things. We're not going to let it go any longer. <laughs> going to stand up for our values. We have to stand up for our values. And we're mm-hmm. going to take back our country, and we're going to take it back at a level that is... Very, very Tremendous. good for our country, and it's good for our citizens because we can't allow bad things to happen to our country. We cannot. Tell and me bad, wrong. bad things are yeah, happening to us. Right. Perhaps like never before, you'll be seeing what goes on, and perhaps like never before. Okay, well, did he slur? I, I don't think really. He, not in that sense. Man's right? using really? Greek. He, yes. He's using Greek in the speech. That's right. He used polios. So uh, that's powerful. That's powerful. <laughs> I don't even know what polios means in Greek. So it's all Greek to me. Uh, 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 I, he looked fine. He looked fine. Uh, they, they, compared to Biden? Oh, are you kidding it. me? And they don't ever notice the disintegration of the mind of Joe Biden. It never occurs to them. They see him stumble and stagger all over the place, slur his words, can't uh, find his train of thought, pauses for 10, 15 seconds at a time, has no idea what he's talking about. But this is the sign of somebody who's got dementia? Oh, yeah. And Come they, on now. And they talked about how he uh, how he walked on the stage. I mean, I've seen... Uh, Did you see him fall up the stairs uh, on, the, uh, on Air Force One? I don't recall that. 
Um, I, I wonder if we it. still have that video I, handy. I do recall. Uh, mm -hmm. I do recall him walking. Oh, here we gingerly. do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at that. That's come on now. As, aside from the Donkey Kong or whatever that game is, uh, this is a falling three times in a row like that, and that meant nothing to them. That wasn't a problem at all. She's like, I can't even walk up the stairs. Are I'm you kidding me? I'm surprised we didn't air the, I don't know if you've seen the the video meme of Trump dry, hitting a golf ball and then knocking down Biden on the stairs. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do have that. <laughs> we, I mean, we did. We, yeah. we, we did. I don't know if we still do. Stupid funny. But anyway, uh, we, I do remember uh, President Trump, <laughs> former President Trump, uh, walking slowly down a ramp. I'll tell you that. I remember that. Yes. Uh, he walked slowly down a ramp. So <laughs> So you know what that means? So, you know what that means? Thank you. He's on his deathbed. <laughs> he walked slowly for a minute. Down a ramp. Now, we do actually have other footage of Biden walking slowly through a field, <laughs> and then he bends over to pick a dandelion for his <laughs> wife. <laughs> oh, and here it is. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, Look at, we, look at these pretty flowers. That one looks rough, man. Uh, he's gingerly walking oh, through that field. Yeah. Uh, oh, pretty flower oh. for my girlfriend. And look at this has already gone to seed. It's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you know she's absolutely oh. disgusted with him. Yeah, she sure is. Nobody. Man. She doesn't think that's cute. She doesn't think it's romantic. And up the stairs Whoop. and nope. drop Flop. it. We're gone. Right behind the marine, so nobody saw. Yeah. But oh, that's uh, awesome. That's so great. This is so good. None of that is problematic, though. None of that. I mean, I I don't know. If Trump would have walked through those dandelions without stopping somebody saying, we got to get somebody to mow these bad boys. What's going on? <laughs> That's the only thing that would have happened. Yes. I uh, long look a little rough. What's going on with the with the lawn care out there, man? Jeez. <laughs> and there was a lot of dandelions. I know. Who's minding the... I don't know. It looked a little rough. They're doing... I got to give them a number to call uh, of my guys. Because... <laughs> they come, they run, <laughs> they get it done. They're in and out. That's right. I think we yep. might have the same guy. <laughs> We might. <laughs> Very well might. Uh triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also over the weekend, uh late last week, we heard about AOC's grandma, right, in Puerto Rico. Yeah. <clears throat> she her house still hasn't been fixed. Apparently there's some roof damage and it's coming through the ceiling in maybe her living room or kitchen area. Uh and AOC was just disgusted Freaking by that. Trump, man. Trump. I yep. hate him so much. Still man. hasn't gotten funds to her grandmother. So what happens? Matt Walsh, our friend Matt Walsh, raised a hundred. This is a great idea. Raised a hundred thousand dollars to help her out for a Beulah or whatever, and uh, wanted to donate it to her so that she could get her house fixed. Nope. Apparently, it wasn't the grandma, but somebody in the family. Who do you suppose that was? Uh, probably AOC herself said, uh, yeah, no, thank you. No, we're not taking the money. Wait, they just raised $100,000 for you. This is an excellent alternative for people who voluntarily gave rather than have it come forced out of their, out of their bank accounts uh, through taxation. Nope, they wanted nothing to do with it. I think that's really despicable. I, th I think it is too. Really despicable. And it shows, it shows how... Faults and what a liar yes. AOC is. Yeah, it just shows the incredible hypocrisy that they, she doesn't really care about her grandmother. She cares about appearances, and she cares about her ideology. That's it. Yep. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pack Ray Unleashed coming up. Some tweets here. Uh, the Steve forty two tweets. You know who doesn't punch above his weight? Bloated Keith. <laughs> It'd be impossible to. Punch above that weight. Am I right? I don't understand. You don't? The, no, okay. What why? I think Steve is saying there is that essentially you're overweight. Oh. Yeah, I think oh, that's what he's <laughs> I think that's what he's kind of saying. So Yeah. So anti disestablishmentarianism coffee lover M tweets. It's been a few days, and Keith Mellonak's bee sting swelling isn't going down. I mean, I think it might need to get checked. 
<laughs> I mean, <coughs> again, I, I think what's being said there maybe is that you're uh, overweight. I think I finally am starting to get yeah, it. Yeah, are you getting it? Yeah, kind of. Mm. Seems to be sort of a theme. <laughs> it does seem to be a theme. Yeah, that's weird. Cornstarch <laughs> Crusader tweets, why would you pay anything to watch people pummel one another when you could see that on an almost daily basis on Twitter? Yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Jimmy Dimples, Joe Biden's finishing the transformation of America, more like finishing America. Oof. Uh, from Nicole's mask with glasses, condensation core, woke people, taking tax money from rich black people for reparation payments while chanting, stop repressing yourself, stop repressing yourself. Uh, and uh, finally from B to Bodine, yeah, but what about his pants, Pat? Did you notice he was wearing his pants backwards? <laughs> I didn't either, but apparently leftists did. Uh, Biden or Trump? I, I don't know. Did Trump have a... Was Trump wearing his pants backward? <laughs> I, I don't think so. I doubt it. Can you show us, show us the... Is there a picture of it? Uh, is there an actual little photograph of... I don't... I don't think I don't so. Know. I don't, I don't know, know what that I don't unless it's said in the story where hadn't seen anything uh, on that. Yet. I had not either. Now I know the story that they were, you know, the the big deal that he was lethargic and slurring his speech, and they talked yeah. about him slumping mm-hmm. and uh, walking slowly on the stage, stuff like that. But uh, and uh, you know, the worst picture that they have of him is all you know, humped over doing his point to the crowd and. There's no uh, way he wore his pants backward. Is there? Is there any way? No. See, uh, Rob, see if you can find no a way. still shot of him go- approaching the stage this week, uh, no this way. weekend. And no way does he. We'll check on. I that. mean, really? I mean, I know, I know. You, you, Trump has a lot of yes men around him, yes men and women. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure that someone would at least say, "Hey, hey Don, <laughs> your zipper should be on the other side, dude." Just a. Uh, Quick safety tip for you there. Why don't you take a second and turn those bad boys around? <laughs> you would hope, you know, as you're going into an important speech, yeah. uh, you would hope somebody would say something to that effect. Right. Plus, it's difficult to, uh, you know, button him up in the back mm-hmm. unless it's, unless he's just using a full Jamar Sansa belt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Band around the waist there. <laughs> but those. Just- there's just no way that any could of, happen. Any of the could JMR Sansa belts that I've seen usually mm. still have the snaps in front. Yes, usually. <laughs> All right. Uh, the Washington Post has actually fact-checked something that Joe Biden said last week. Uh, he actually had this to say, you might remember, about Alzheimer's patients and how many there's going to be. Folks, diseases like Alzheimer's, diabetes, cancers, mm-hmm. they're all on the cusp of being able to be dealt with. Mm. You know, if we don't do something about Alzheimer's in America, yeah. every single solitary hospital bed that exists in America, as the nurses can tell you, mm-hmm. every single one. Every one. Every single one. We occupied the next 15 years with an Alzheimer's patient. Oh. Every Wait, one. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> the nurses will tell you. That wasn't a real cloud, crowd uh, laughing at him because crowds uh, that gather for him don't laugh at him. They just. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. That seems like a lot of people. Hmm. So you're saying there's about 900,000 hospital beds in America, and every single one is going to be occupied by an Alzheimer uh, patient. Hmm. That seems like a lot. <laughs> it does seem like a but lot. He said it, so it's got to be true. Well, I mean, the nurses will tell you. Nurses, nurse, he said the nurses know, and they do. So, huh. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. So, Washington Post actually gave that four Pinocchios. Wow. They also said, normally when a politician makes a detailed claim like this, we can quickly find a possible source. A report in an academic journal or from a think tank, a congressional hearing, or an expert speech. Right. From which the factoid was plucked and possibly twisted. But we could not find anything wow we consulted with many experts on alzheimer's disease but they were stumped too i figured that i actually thought that he meant uh you know he just worded it wrong like at some point you know every bed would be 
full of Alzheimer's. Not at one time. You know what I mean? But there would be, uh, you know, 900,000 patients at some point. But That's not what he said, though. <laughs> no, it is so not. Don't no. twist what he said. That's not what he said. I will not allow it. I will not abide it. No. You will not cut him that kind of slack. That's not what he said. Uh, anyway, Washington Post says this seems to be a Biden original. So they couldn't find <laughs> couldn't find anybody he took it from. It must be his own sort of thought process. I, I don't know how that happens. That's just crazy. Why would you think that? Because it's really bad. Yeah, I obviously it's bad, but every single every single one, every single hospital bed. <sighs> No. Uh, the nurses will tell you. I don't know why you're... Are you doubting what the nurses I, say? I am, yeah, because I haven't heard any nurse, a nurse say that ever. Not ever. <laughs> uh, all right. We've got, I guess we have a still shot of oh, Trump okay, good. as he's approaching. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Are his pants on backward? Oh. No. <laughs> that can't be real. That can't. No. I don't know. I, I I find it a little. Uh, I gotta find it out. Unnerving to be staring at his crotch right now. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. It's only yeah, what I do. Seven forty three <laughs> Eastern. <laughs> I don't care if it's noon. It's it's never the right time to be staring at another man's crotch. Well, you just know. from my perspective. I mean, if you if you're into that, that's you know that's fine. I mean, but uh, I'm nece- not necessarily. So it Whatever. could be just that the zipper area is not that pronounced, right? It could be a flap over the zipper area. Show it again. Let's see. The- I've got to see this, though. All right. There he is uh, doing a pose. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I, no, I will say. I don't, know. I don't know. I will say I'm, you know, while whatever. I will say, this, this isn't the first time I, I've. I've I, yeah. zoomed in mm. on particular photos yeah. on the internet. So, you know, once you zoom up, it gets a little blurry, so it's tough to see. Does, it, does it look like that's a flap yeah, nah, for the yeah, zipper? Yeah, it's tough to tell. I mean, I can see what they're saying, though. <laughs> you can make that out of it. I mean, uh, okay. I, I mean, there's no way, though, right? No. There's no way he put his pants no. on backward. <laughs> There is no way. No. Right? Please tell me there's no way. No. Please. Okay, there's no way. Thank you. Okay, we're done with it. We're done then. (laughs) Unless somebody could prove otherwise. 888-933-93. Let me tell you about Omega XL. Uh, Omega XL is fantastic. It's not a drug. It's not something you're going to become dependent on or addicted to. Uh, and it's it's not going to break down your body because it's all natural. It comes from the pristine waters around New Zealand, and it's contained in a tiny little gel cap that's super easy to swallow. Also, it's backed by 35 years of clinical research, so it really does work, and I'm always skeptical about natural uh, fixes, too. I, I don't know why, because, you know, there are natural... Uh, there are things in nature that obviously help heal our bodies. And those are actually better than the chemical fixes that we have. Um, But we're just so used to taking drugs now that uh, we get we become skeptical about this. But my skepticism ended when I started taking Omega XL. And after about a week, the pain started to subside in my elbow. And after two weeks, it was gone and hasn't been back since. If you'd like to. Give this a shot. Let's see if it'll work for you. When you go to OmegaXL.com slash Pat and buy one bottle, we'll get you a second bottle for free. So you buy the first bottle, we'll throw in a second one for free at OmegaXL.com slash Pat or 800-844-4888. Pat Gray, Unleashed. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, let's go to Frank in Pennsylvania. Hey Frank, you're on the blaze. Good morning. How Good morning. are you? Good. Hey, I just wanted to say, as somebody who volunteered to go down to Puerto Rico 
and uh, you know paid my own expenses to get there and back and while i was there mm. uh i resent the hell out of somebody like aoc saying it's the government's job to to do all the work that needs done in puerto rico to recover from a storm it, it, we were down there fixing roofs the, the morning blaze actually helped uh a friend of mine raise money to offset his trips and i went down and joined him over the holidays uh the christmas holidays uh at my own expense, out of pocket, and and we were down really cool. doing doing roofs and uh, cleaning, removing mold. That's great, and, but that's a that's a volunteer activity. That's something that the churches and organizio mm-hmm. NGOs do. That's not the job of the government to, to say, hey, we're just going to pay for all of this. Right. That's not and and that and then to turn down money that was donated yeah you might be upset of the tongue-in-cheek manner in which it was done but to just turn flat turn down the money that was raised to go into organizations like the one i work with uh all hands and hearts that's just ridiculous yeah i think it's Uh, despicable and appreciate it thanks a lot frank and thanks for doing that that's uh that's great that you you took the time to do that Uh, amazing on your own dime too you know and i don't even think that matt did that tongue-in-cheek I think he really wanted help. Now, there's probably an element of he's going to get a little attention from right. it. Right, and, he, it's and a, that's it's fine. A, it's a win-win either way for him. Right, right. A, it's a great idea. B, actually swip, flip those around. A, it's the right thing to do. Second, it was a really good idea. Yes. yes. So, uh, and, but look, why and, would you look a gift horse in the mouth like that? Why? Well, because she she does believe the government should yes. do all that. Yes, she does. Obviously. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Rather than people who gave willingly. You said here, you know, for whatever reason, they donated their money, their hard-earned money, voluntarily. Right. Which... Uh, is an important element of charity because it's not charity if it's not if it's not voluntary. It's uh, when it's forced. That's not charity. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's taxation. Taxation has nothing to do with charity. Huh? Absolutely nothing to do with it. Must be a new way of thinking. Right? I know <laughs> these newfangled thoughts from these people. I don't know. And then to just say, you know, spit in his face and say, nope, we're not doing it. Well. Why? Why wouldn't you take it? And in fact, GoFundMe, I guess because the you know the family called and said, we don't want it, they're duty-bound then to close yeah. down the charity and then to give back the, the money from yeah. the people donated. So it's really too bad. It's really too bad that you wanted to play politics with that. That just shows that her main goal was politics, was Correct. political, not her grandmother's Nothing well-being. Nothing to do with her grandmother. Because you could be setting that uh, those repairs up right now, right if now. She actually needed them. Yes, and if that was your goal, rather than complaining and and being uh, a socialist and saying the government hasn't done this, well, okay, who cares who does it? Just so it gets done. If your main goal is to help your grandmother, your abula, then take the money and make the repairs. Right. Simple as that. And say thank you. Exactly right. And say, hey, this is a really cool gesture. Thank you for that. That would have uh, ingratiated herself to people. And she, but she can't. No, she's not, she, no she's not capable she of that. that. It's pathetic. It's really pathetic. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. <laughs> I absolutely love this story about this Italian artist, uh, Salvatore Tremendous. Garau. He has just sold an invisible sculpture for $18,000. I put mine up for sale online this weekend for 10. Did you? Yeah, 10 and the... uh, That's a real buy. I I know. It's a steal at 10. I know. I even, you know, posted a picture of it as well online. And, uh, you know, that... Did you really? Yeah. Did you post a picture? Yes, I did. Was it? Yes, it did I, it have the little uh, five by five square that it, that it should fit in? Yes, because that's an important element. You got to put the little five by five square, and my invisible sculpture is in this space. That's correct. It's act- actually occupying that space right that's there. That's correct. And I also, uh, <laughs> I also put the. Uh, I think I. I think I said that I was going to put the, uh, the uh, non fungible token. 
or only five thousand. Oh the wow! Picture, the picture that I put online. That's so, really generous. That's really generous. I I'd like you to accept this invisible check for the whole fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> uh, for both of your invisible that's so, sculptures that's and so kind your, of you. Uh, a non fungible item that's as so well. Kind of you. Yes. <laughs> I, I signed it in invisible ink, and really? it's an invisible check signed uh, with my name, invisibly, of course, and the invisible dollar amount. Uh, so wow. congratulations well, on thank that. Thank you. Just uh, have it delivered to my house in an invisible truck, if you would. Uh, I mean, it comes with a certificate of authenticity. <laughs> it does. Yes, And it, does. it comes with a set of instructions. How stupid are we now? It, <laughs> it is so stupid that somebody has just sold... Nothing for eighteen thousand dollars, and it must be exhibited in a private house in a roughly five by five foot space, <laughs> mm-hmm. free of obstruction. <laughs> oh, that's incredible! That's acid. That's genius. That is genius. <laughs> I love this guy. He's uh, sixty-seven I, years old. The sculptor is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the and artist. he says the vacuum is nothing more than a space full of energy. And even if we empty it and there's nothing left, uh, that nothing has a weight. No, it doesn't. Thank you. No, it does not. Therefore, it has energy that is condensed and transformed into particles. That is into us, much like how we shape a god we've never seen. Uh, No. No. I'm just (laughs) going to go ahead and say no on that. But... Let me give you some invisible thanks for the effort. Pat Gray Unleashed. Welcome to Monday. Finally got that pesky weekend out of the way. Jeez, I thought it would never end. So irritating. Sure is. You know, not being able to come into work and have a great time here in the morning. I just be get up at two thirty. Home. Love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. So, uh, welcome back to the work week. The happiest day of the week. Monday, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Also at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. What do you make of the uh, no evidence of aliens finding by the government? Um, but we can't rule it out either, right? Yeah, it's, there's no evidence that it comes from outer space. Look, if there's if we have evidence of technology that is so far beyond anything we can possibly imagine here within the next you know, 10 or 15 or 20 years, if they're hundreds of years into the future ahead of us, that's evidence of extraterrestrials, I would say. That's that's not the Chinese right. or the Russians or the Cubans or whoever else you might want to say uh, it might be. It's, it's impossible. It's just impossible. For, for these vehicles be, to be doing the things that have been described that's out of the realm of possibility for anybody on this planet. I mean, you'd think so. Now, we, we we saw the report, right, not long ago that talked about how they were using materials that they found. From... Yeah, they've re- reverse engineered some yeah. of the stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, okay, you, you know, sure, I believe you. Okay. There's no evidence of it, but it could be. And there's no evidence. They're saying it's not us. It's not anything on Earth. Well, okay, well then what is it? Right. What is it? Uh, um, Maybe they're trying to lead us to believe that it's Russians or Chinese. Uh, If that's true, that's a real problem. That's a a real problem. If they're hundreds of years ahead of us in Russia or China, yeah, that's, I mean, we're done. (laughs) Right? There's no recovering from that. Right. Which, which, Which I find hard to believe but maybe that's I just find it the impossible. american in me over the weekend I, I was reading an article about how um there's an expert there's several experts who who were saying that this is definitely our tech they said there's that's kind what, of a, that's what i think there's a reason it's happening around air force bases right uh, right and the air force is ours right and the air force isn't going to tell the navy and you know nobody's right. going to tell each other what they're doing and what they're working on i got it and so I just feel like it's us. I, I've felt that all along. Which would be the most comforting scenario, of course. Well, man, that's why I believe I want yeah. to believe that. Yeah. Because, I mean, the only thing that, the only thing that really was uh, against us, right, was, I mean, back in, in the 50s, right, when, with Sputnik, right, they beat us to the punch. Mm-hmm. And that really 
lit a fire under America. Sure did. Like, whoa, Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Uh, How about no? No, We're not letting that happen. Right. And we haven't since, and I I feel like we haven't let up after that. But That could be just me wishfully thinking that America is still America. Well, I think from a technological standpoint, we are. I don't know about morality anymore. I don't know about, you know, uh, right and wrong anymore because it doesn't seem to be the America that we once knew. You know, like I'm talking ancient times, though, like 2017, 2018. I mean, how old were you in 2018? I don't know that I was bored. Yeah, I know. Me too. Me too. Uh <laughs> I wasn't even a glint in my dad's <laughs> eye back in 2018. <laughs> so <laughs> it was another world. It was another. It was another world back then. It was. It was. We have come so far just since the Biden administration started. It's staggering how fast all it, of this ch- stuff has happened. It does <laughs> seem like it was a, a a lot longer than it was ago. Absolutely does. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Let's go to David in Pennsylvania. Hey, David, you're on the blaze. Hey, Pat. Hey, Biggin. Uh, <laughs> I just got two quick comments. All right. On the coronavirus thing, being Chinese engineered, maybe that it's you know directly targeted at elderly people because they got one point four billion people. They need to get rid of them old people. Two, the AOE mm-hmm. AOC thing. I think your abuela's home has already been repaired. And AOC has declined the money for fear of it being brought up as yeah, fraud. That's, uh, that would not surprise me. You think it was already repaired? Where did oh, it, did you see uh, evidence of that? Because it was just last week she was complaining about it. Oh no, I'm not saying I see evidence or have any evidence mm. or anything like that. But it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past her to yeah. have old pictures and be like, "Oh, it's Trump's fault." Well, that I mean, that's why yeah. I, I even said earlier, you know, Maybe. if it ne- if it even needs repairing, because I, I thanks, David. I, I'm with you on that, Dave. Uh, I believe I would that would not surprise me at all that she's just complaining and laying that groundwork. And I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Um, lying, lying, <laughs> as she always does. Yes. Yeah, and that's an old picture that we saw last week. Yeah, maybe that's yeah, possible. Uh, and that would make sense. Too. But also that gives her a little credit that she's already had the uh, repairs done or the government already came in and, and did it. That does show that she's a, a lying sack of crap. <laughs> yes, it does. So yes, it does. That uh, that wouldn't be. And I'm sure I'm sure uh, some of the from the major networks are working on reporting on that as we speak. They're on their way to. Oh, Puerto Rico. Yeah, they're going right to get right now. on that. Yeah. They're going to get right on it. Yeah. Also, apparently there's damning science now strongly suggesting that COVID-19 is man-made, uh, was optimized in a lab for maximum infectivity before hitting the outside uh, to catastrophic effect. Writing an opinion in an opinion piece for the Wall Street Journal, David, uh, Dr. Stephen Quay and Richard Muller pointed to two key pieces of evidence to support their claim, which has increasingly gained steam after long being derided as little more than speculation or conspiracy theory. The first thing is that uh, the nature of -of gain-of-function research in which microbiologists tweak a virus and a virus's genome to alter its properties, such as making it more transmissible or more lethal, of the 36 possible genome pairings right. that can produce two uh, arginine amino acids in a row, and I think we all know what happens when you produce two oh, I th- arginine amino acids in a row. I thought there was three. Row. I thought actually there were three. No, that would the... be really bad. Okay. I seriously, I did think or there really were Or really good. I'm not sure which. Um, it's either really bad or, or really, really good. good. Mm. <laughs> But that results, oh yeah, it results in boosting a virus's lethality. Uh, The one most commonly used in gain-of-function research is CGG or CGG. No, CGG or, okay, Uh, it's CGG twice. 
That's what it is. Well, I mean, we don't know which one they used. We don't know if they used or CGG. Double CGG or double or CGG. CGG. I don't know if they did that. I have no idea what this is talking about. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I can barely speak again this all of a sudden. This is why we need you know, gain-of-function research. That's, this is why. Because <laughs> obviously I, I have not regained my, the function of my voice uh, <laughs> since I got this whatever crap I have right now. The insertion sequence of choice <clears throat> is the double CGG, as you know. I do. Um, that's because it's readily available and convenient, and scientists have a great deal of experience inserting it. An additional <clears throat> advantage of the double CGG sequence, compared with the 35 other possible choices, it creates a useful beacon that permits the scientists to track the insertion in the laboratory. I have no idea what they're talking about here. But apparently it's a damning fact. Uh, <laughs> because it, <clears throat> it was found in CO, uh, in the, in the COVID 2 uh, virus. Right. Proponents of zoonotic origin <clears throat> let me just take a drink right here. well they, they've talked about the the zoonotics that's what it calls trying to think about that last zoonotic week. Yeah. zoonotic yeah <clears throat> when it uh, you know transmitted <clears throat> from uh animal to man they uh have tried multiple ways to make <clears throat> that happen and have failed so uh <clears throat> they and uh, i'm seriously when you when you talked about the the two the double Thing. I really uh, did. I, I remember reading that one doc I thought was, and maybe it was another sequence that was three sequences, and uh, that was couldn't happen without it being done by man, right? I mean oh. that's what they're saying that, that uh, you know the way the sequences were were lined up uh -huh. that doesn't happen naturally. So that was so it, was, it had to be created had to in be a lab. created by man, yeah. At the minimum, this fact that the coronavirus, with all its random possibilities, took the rare and unnatural combination used by human researchers, this is kind of what you're saying, implies that the leading theory for the origin of the virus must be laboratory escape. Yeah. And they're not saying that they did it on purpose. Correct. It, it could have happened accidentally or on purpose. Correct. We, we don't know. They're just saying that because of the sequence involved, uh, there's no way it could have happened naturally. Right. Because it doesn't occur naturally that way. It's impossible. And we know that some of their scientists were sick in November. Now. <laughs> right. We know that. Right. So, uh, you know, we we were, we were believe that it's possible <clears throat> that there was uh, some sort of mistake at the lab. And, you know, then they it got out. Right. It doesn't mean that they did it on purpose at all. Right. And so, you know, I mean, do we, do we, does it matter? I mean, it matters if they did do it on purpose. But right now, I mean, let's just, we just need to know how it started. Right? Yes. I, I really, yes. That's, that's all we really care about. And SARS and MERS, which are both related, right? They're both uh, COVID-2, aren't they? They're, they're both in, that, so, in yeah. that neighborhood, in that family, uh, which were, they were both confirmed to be of natural origin. They evolved rapidly as they spread through human, the human population until the most contagious forms dominated. By contrast, COVID-19 proved to be highly contagious from the point it was first detected. So there's another difference that leads them to believe... That it was man-made. That it was man-made. Yes. I mean, they're getting more and more and more of this evidence gathered, and uh, it, looks, <clears throat> it looks like they created it. Right. And, and uh, you know... For so long, everyone that even just hypothesized about that were shut down. Right? Just yes, it was a conspiracy theory. Stop speaking. And was just asking questions we'd like to know. No. No. And that's exactly how they were treated. Yes. Uh, because the science was settled, as we always hear. Uh, and now, finally, Fauci, because he has taken both sides of every issue, has said science isn't settled, it evolves. He just said that huh. last week. Huh. Really? It that's, isn't settled. It just uh, evolves. Science evolves. Huh. So that's what you've done. You've evolved. Huh. That's I mean, really so, weird. Social media had to evolve too, <clears throat> right? So instead of shutting everybody down, they had to come back and say, ah, oh, you know what? You guys can talk about that now. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. We won't, we won't block you or cut your information off now. You can talk. That's okay. 
No problem. Don't worry about it. Whereas, <clears throat> whereas uh, prior to this, uh, you were treated as if you were a flat earther. If yeah. You dared suggest. How dare you suggest this came from a laboratory? And speaking of flat earthers, Don't. <clears throat> didn't you have the flat earther society head on? I did. I had flat earth Dave on, uh, on chewing the fat. And uh, it was it was a fun interview. It's also uh, up on my YouTube page, Chewing the Fat with Jeff Fisher. Uh, he's a fascinating guy. It was, it was, I had him uh, kind of give a class. Now, this is the... Is he the president of the Flat Earth Society? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I think, you know, maybe he's, you know, he, I think he's the, you know, he's the biggest spokesperson these days okay. for the, the Flat Earth. As I talked to the actual founder of it, <clears throat> but this was back in the late 90s when right. I was in Salt Lake City. And I think he's dead now, so I don't think he speaks a lot. I don't. I don't think he does too many interviews anymore. Maybe that's why he didn't email me back. <laughs> but, yeah, that might be. That might be. He's refused to email people since he died. <laughs> I don't know. He's picky that way. Um, but his thing was <clears throat> nobody's even been to space ever. Not only have yeah, we not gone to the moon. To. Not only have we not gone to the moon. We haven't been in space. Correct. Because space is very tiny. I I don't know why this is one of their beliefs. But they believed that the sun at the time was, I believe, 37 miles from the Earth. Uh, I think it's a little bit farther than that. But he, he gave, he gives a, I had him take me to class and try to convince me, bring me to the dark side. And uh, I'm not saying he did. <clears throat> oh. But he's pretty convincing. Is he? Let, let's hear convincing. some of that. Now, I have a clip mm-hmm. from the interview, and he's talking about uh, circumnavigation. Going all the way around the globe, traveling mm-hmm. from pole to pole around the globe. Okay. okay. Which he claims never happened. So that's what we call southern circumnavigation, and no one's ever done it. So there was, um, not too long ago, there was a, a pilot that was going to fly. He was going to circumnavigate pole to pole. So check this out. And he was going to go for the Guinness Book of Records, first person to ever do it. No one's okay. ever done it. So he went pole north pole. Pulled, well, pulled. He's going to go. He's going to circumnavigate north okay. south. All right, got you. Okay. Right. Yep. Because you agree. No one has north, ever done that. No one's ever done it, and he was really? going for the world record. This is so, so uh, Guinness Book. You know, <laughs> so he went to Alaska, to California, Hawaii, uh, Philippines, I think, over here, Santiago. Then he went to the South Pole, and he said the weather was too bad, so he couldn't continue. So he turned around and came back. Went up through Brazil, New York. And back around, and we're like, okay, okay. he didn't do it, didn't get circumnavigated. Guinness Book <laughs> gave him gave him the, the the record for southern circumnavigation. This is all he did. This is a flat Earth map. That's he went down to the South Pole, whatever they call the South Pole, and he turned around and came back. That's like me saying, you know, I, I live on a straight road. I'm going to say my road's a sphere. I'm going to go that way, and I'm going to pop up back. over there. Right. But I just go that way. I touch the end of the road, and I turn around and come back, and I say, see, I proved it's a sphere. <laughs> Pretty so, funny, right? There you go. All right. Is it true that nobody's no. ever circumnavigated that way? Because I don't know. It was what sixteen something when Ferdinand Magellan uh, circumnavigated the world. It was done a long time ago, but that was, you know, around the not pole to pole. No, not pole to pole. Right. So don't start, and don't start. So you're talking north and south. Don't start bogging me down with your little facts and figures and uh, information. Uh-huh. I'm just telling you what flat. I'm just reporting what Flat Earth Dave said. Okay. Flat Earth Dave really believes what you can tell. He believes what you're he's darn saying. Right, he does. He. <laughs> you're darn right. Like, he does. He really. Did you ask him about? Hey, have you ever seen? Uh, I don't know uh, pictures of the planet uh, from space. Yes. And. Well, he has, he believes yeah. that many of those pictures are the same pictures they've used. They just keep showing the same pictures over and over again because <laughs> he's showed evidence. And how do we get those video. pictures in the first place? He said they were just man-made. Oh, okay. Falsified. Huh. And and he has evidence of pictures from years ago mm-hmm. and today with the same cloud covers. So... <laughs> No. Yes, he does. Yeah, yeah. The evidence is in the video, Pat. All right. So you can watch I, on Chewing the Fat with Jeff Fisher's YouTube channel, or you can hear the uh, hear the interview on the podcast. Page. Has he ever been in an airplane and looked out the window? <laughs> Has he ever done that? Because I don't know. You can kind of tell the Earth's not flat when you do that. So you can. Mm-hmm. You kind of can. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, I just know he gives evidence that the earth is flat. <laughs> That's all I know. He convinced you, didn't he? That's all I, know. I would not be surprised. I think I, I if you're not a little bit convinced now. You are, aren't you? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. You look it. like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And let me tell you about Rough Greens. This is great stuff for your dog. Uh, it is a supplement to your dog's food because your dog's food is dead food. Uh, if you use the dry kibble stuff, it, all the nutrients and the live things that are active in their food have all been baked out of it, killed, because it has to last for a really long time on the store shelf. Um, so that's where uh, Rough Greens comes in. It puts back the vitamins and minerals and the probiotics and the omega oils and all that stuff that your dog needs to be healthy and and happy and really really active. Now my dog won't even won't even eat her food without rough greens on top of it now. That's how spoiled she is. Um sometimes though apparently I haven't met a dog like this but apparently it takes some dogs a little bit to get used to it. So you want to see first of all if your dog will eat it. They want to send you a free bag to check that out. So Go to roughgreens.com and get a free bag of Rough Greens for your dog to try out. All you have to do is pay for the shipping. Roughgreens.com or call 833-ROUGH-DOG. Pat Gray. Unleashed. It's true. I got some tweets here. Hippie Patriot tweets. They said at the same time, Pat, that's asinine. Jeffy, that's brilliant. Our world in one exchange. <laughs> when we were talking about the uh, in, invisible artwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're <laughs> such a scam brilliant. artist. It is brilliant. If you can get $18,000 for doing oh, no. nothing. Thank you. Uh, it's either asinine or brilliant. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure which. Watcher17 tweets, AOC could travel to Puerto Rico but couldn't stop by the southern border to cry at the migrant shipping containers. I mean, it's kind of on the way. <laughs> Todd Curtis, uh, I know there'd be some attempt to deflect and distract from the Fauci emails, but I got to admit, I did not see the UFO thing coming. And uh, I can't help but wonder if those aliens are here just for the free vaccine. Maybe they're fleeing a planet with a social government, socialist government. Yeah, you know, it's maybe. possible. It's yeah, possible. maybe. Uh, I got this, uh, what's it been? 10, 12 days now, I think, that uh, I've had this crud, whatever kind of uh, right. virus I have. Now, it's not COVID, supposedly, because I was tested right. tested negative for it. Uh, but it just won't go away. So uh, I, the other day I brought I brought this. I, I looked up how to soothe a horse voice. Uh-huh. And they said, Apple cider vinegar and honey. I I'm uh, under the so impression over the years that apple cider vinegar is like the cure cure all for, for almost everything. everything. Yeah, yeah. I've seen yes, I've seen it listed. I in know. A lot of, <laughs> I know for a lot of different ailments. Uh, but it's kind of and it's nasty. really good. Oh, it's really good. What do you think to yourself? I, it's nasty. I I I, don't, I can't. You can't. I, I don't know. You couldn't drink this. It's, that's it's really bougie. Well, I mean, my voice just keeps. I know, and giving it's, out. It, I know, and, it, and it's 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 hard to take. And when you when you need something, and the doc says, "Hey, why don't you rub apple cider vinegar all over yourself?" Yeah, no, thank you. You know what? I'd rather ingest it than rub it on me. <laughs> I'm, no, I don't want to smell <laughs> like vinegar all day. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's I, apple cider vinegar. Or, yeah, so. I know. I know. And the apple cider is what really sings through, isn't it? <laughs> Rather than the vinegar. It sure is. It sure is. It's just nasty. <laughs> so, so gross. I mean, I'm, you know what? I'm, right. I'm okay with being so sick. So you talk for a minute while I'm I... okay with being sick. I do love, you know, speaking of the... Uh, the the uh, unidentified flying objects though and we talk about you know we, how they talk about how there's no evidence no evidence of flying objects that are aliens and yet they say well they haven't reached a definitive conclusion on what these unidentified flying objects are so yeah if we haven't reached that conclusion how are we making the determination that it isn't alien Devices. I just I I don't understand that at all. We should put them to really the apple don't. cider vinegar test. If they think it's delicious, they're from another they're from world. Another world. <laughs> they're from another world. <laughs> they think it's one of the nastier things they've done in a while. Human. They're from here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
A couple of tweets here from Barking Turtle Eat a Bear dot gum. <laughs> uh, Jeffy is now one of Flat Earth Society's many members around the globe. <laughs> You probably did sign up right I after have the not, interview. I have, I have not accepted any speaking engagements yet, but, you know, it's possible. It's coming, though, right? It's coming. From Cornstarch uh, Corn Starch Crusader, did Keith leave behind any of his burden, uh, bourbon or vodka to add to that concoction? Now, see, that would that would make it taste. Yeah, he probably did. It's probably sure. somewhere around here. Just a tad better. Uh, wow, that apple cider vinegar. Good. Is nasty. Good. We'll see if it works. So far. Uh, it's code of the vocal cords. Well, I mean, I told you, it's we'll the cure all for everything. I might vomit any minute, but uh, <laughs> I think it did coat the vocal cords. So, uh, all right, triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Let's go to Dave in Arkansas. Hey, Dave, you're on the blaze. Yeah, uh, about the flat Earth thing. Yeah, uh, I'm kind of a Dave the Round Man. So, hey, I know why that one guy doesn't answer emails because he's not Democrat. If he was a Democrat and he was dead, he'd still answer emails. And then the, uh, the uh, if it was a flat Earth, cats would have pushed everything over the edge already. So it's round. There's no edge. Okay, right. it just goes on. There, it, it is round, and they, I think they acknowledge it's round, but it's like a yes. disc, Correct. like a CD. And it's it, round, and it just but goes flat. on. You're not falling off. You just, if you ever could make it through, yeah, and you know, it's possible that some do. Mm-hmm. You just, it's another. It moves, goes on. It's another world. <laughs> Makes sense, right, that, Dave? Okay. You, are, are you sold? I don't know why that's uh, yeah, difficult sold. to understand. I, I, yeah. He's sold. Kind of like I'm sold that Hunter's a good man, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Uh, sis, in Wisconsin, you're on the blaze. Yes, good morning. Morning. I have an observation about this flat earth thing. All right. Okay, he said the plane flew to the South Pole, turned around, and flew back, right? That's correct. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you were flying around our globe, you would be headed south, mm-hmm. right? And yes. you, when you came back up over the top, you'd be headed south still. If you flew to the South Pole and turned around and came back, you would now be headed north, and your plane mm-hmm. would be in, in the opposite direction, correct? Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah, if, if you fly people? south until you get to Antarctica, and then you turn around and you go the other way, then you're going north. Yeah, Right, yes. but your plane would actually be turned around. It wouldn't still be headed south. Right. It would be now headed north. Wouldn't you think all these flat earthers would observe that when it came back, that it was headed in a different direction? It just makes no sense. Uh, yeah, um, thanks, sis. I, I think what she's saying is if you keep, maybe she's saying, I'm, I'm not positive on this. I'm a little confused now. Are you a little buzzed on apple cider vinegar? Y- yes, yes. And that uh, raw Texas honey. They just threw me for a loop, all of it. Uh, but if you if you are flying to the to the South Pole, okay. and you just keep flying around the South Pole right. until you're headed back up the other side, right. then yes, you're going north. Yes, you are. Right? Right. So forget about the stopping and heading, turning around. If you just keep flying... Uh, and then south zip around. You're coming until back you north. loop okay. around, you're going north, right. and that should be proof right there. But he says nobody says that didn't happen. Nobody's ever right. done that's, it. That, correct, that correct. Because be. when he got down to the South Pole, the the last the guy that had the Guinness record didn't do it. That can't right. be right. That can't be that. That's mm-hmm. never happened. Come on now, really? Or nobody's ever flown north until you get to the Arctic, and then go around the other side and gone south. Until you get to the bottom and then go north again? He didn't use that example. He used the south one. He used the Antarctic one. So. I, 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 huh. I don't know. That's, uh, I've never thought about it, really, if anybody had ever done that. But if you would do that, that would prove, that would prove the sphere. Correct. So, hmm, we'll have to try it sometime. <laughs> no problem. We'll have to try it sometime. <laughs> uh, all right. Charlie in Wisconsin. Hi, you're on the blaze. <clears throat> okay. I got a cure for your throat oh good okay i got a couple of them actually Mm -hmm. i i really believe in elka seltzer cold tablets the fizzy ones you drop in the water plop plop fizz fizz we got it yeah Mm -hmm. you you drop it you you wake up in the morning and you're feeling like crap you take and plop two of them babies in the water and i can say you're gonna feel great the rest of the day really 
I'm, yeah, I'm going to give it a try. Really work. No matter how bad you've got a cold, mm-hmm. that's probably the best thing to do. Yeah. And okay. now for your your cure of while you're on the job, mm-hmm. you take tea, tea and just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Oh. Just regular tea? Powdered cayenne pepper. Yeah, yeah. regular tea, make it a hot tea, and then you put a, just a pinch <clears throat> of cayenne pepper on there. And that helps with the and, vocal problems. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's you just sip on that, and it it works. All right. Does that work with herbal tea? Yeah, I don't work with any. Yeah. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Charlie. It's- I have to give that a shot. Um, let's go to Martin in Oklahoma. Hey, Martin, you're on the blaze. Yes, I'm curious. If the Earth is a disc, what's on the other side of the disc? Did you ask about that, Jeffy? What do you mean? Question, it, that it just goes on. He's talking about like the, uh, the roots of the trees and stuff underneath. Well, yeah, yeah. How deep is this disc, uh, and uh, what's on the other side of it when you get to eventually when you get to the other side of the disc? Right. It's, it's two miles and <laughs> two and a half <laughs> miles. Have no idea. I, you have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I, I, we did talk about it, and I can't remember what he said. Plus, here's the problem with it. Um, Two kilometers or so down, or down in most places, most there places. are these incredibly, incredibly hot rocks. Because the interior of the Earth is extremely, extremely hot. hot. Several million degrees. Several and million the- degrees. <laughs> <laughs> it's extremely yes. hot. Several million degrees. That, that, does, that would be a problem. We did Wouldn't talk it? about it, and I can't remember exactly what he said. Just have to watch. I'll, I'll find it on the video. Yeah, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. I mean, a lot of people feel that way, that it's nonsense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. You can feel any way you want. You can like apple cider vinegar, too, if you want. It's okay. No, it's not. It's really not okay to like that. No. That's just inhuman. Uh, 888-933-93. Also at Pat Unleashed on uh, Twitter. Speaking of inhuman, how about this Yale University uh, speaker in April gave a lecture on the psychopathic problem of the white mind. Uh, Yale psychiatrist Dr. Aruna Kilanani told the Ivy League school students and faculty that she fantasized about, quote, unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, unquote. Is that a problem? No. No, it's actually probably not for her, no. Uh, I can't believe how many people feel this way and how freely they share this feeling and they just don't care no they don't she says this is the cost of talking to white people at all the cost of your own life as they suck you dry there are no good apples out there meaning there's no good white people white people make my blood boil I had fantasies of unloading a revolver into the head of any white person that got in my way, burying their body and wiping my bloody hands as I walked away relatively guiltless with a bounce in my step. Like I did the world an effing favor. Uh Uh-huh. She talked about uh, Mm. trying to talk directly to white people, as you said, about race, calling Mm. it a waste of our breath. You know what? Just substitute the word black for white. And where would this person be? This person would be jobless. They'd be shamed and they'd be shunned. These these are the rantings of a disturbed, oh, yeah. racist, lunatic. And she's doing therapy with people? She's a psychiatrist. The hate she harbors. Uh, pretty amazing. Sure is. Uh, you and just not don't, afraid to speak about it. No, right. You don't. You just don't get this kind of blatant racist hatred very often from people. I can think of the Black Panther, you know, who talks about killing white babies. Yep. You're going to kill some of the day babies. I hate all white people. Uh, maybe some of Louis Farrakhan's rhetoric uh, is somewhat like this. But for as horrific as white supremacy is supposed to be right now, Show me a similar example of a white person saying something like this about blacks or Hispanics. I, I never see it. M- maybe there are some people, 
Uh, well, I mean, but they, I don't know there who definitely they are. are some people because white supremacy is what, like the number it's one the thing, number right? one, yes, it's the number one problem we face in America right now. And, and this lady proves it. <laughs> <laughs> and she proves how bad white supremacy is. Yeah, she further says white, white people are out of their minds, and they have been for a long time. Uh, we are now in a psychological predicament because white people feel that we're bullying them when we bring up race. They feel that we should be thanking them for all they've done for us. I don't know that anybody thinks that. No. What white person wants any thanks from anybody for what we've... No. They're confused, and so are we. We keep forgetting that directly talking about race is a waste of our breath. Yeah. We are asking a demented, violent predator who thinks that they're a saint or a superhero to accept responsibility. It ain't going to happen. They have five holes in their brain. It's like banging your head against a brick wall. It's just like sort of not a good idea. Does this person still have her job? Oh, I I think so. Of course she does. You can work at Yale with this kind of rhetoric, this kind of hatred, this kind of lack of uh, tolerance and inclusion for people. Did she work there or was she just speaking there? No, she works there. Okay. She's a Yale professor, um, Yale I know, psychologist. I know that she's a forensic psychiatrist and a psychoanalyst. Boy, I bet you she's helpful. Uh, no, you're right. I think she just was host. They okay, hosted that's, her. All right. Yeah, because right. she has her, her, uh, yes. her actual job is in New York, which is not surprising. Right. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I thought. It was just that she was speaking there. But it doesn't matter. She lectured because, at Yale School yeah. of Medicine's uh, Child Study and, Center. And which is, I mean, th- how many times have we heard people denied speaking at these universities? Oh, a million times. Right. And we can't do it because of safety. And we don't, you and know. And their hatred, their, their hateful rhetoric yes. is too dangerous for the children to hear. <laughs> this was fine. Right. This was fine. Ridiculous. It's incredible. What's accepted now as far as racism against white people. Oh, yeah. And that goes back to your reparations, too. Yeah. I mean, that that groundwork is laid, man. That sidewalk is absolutely walking down that road, man. Yep. Yeah, I think it's going to happen this time. I know. California is already out. You know, we talk about the United States government, but if states start to follow, then if the federals, the feds won't have to do it. Right, they'll just they'll mm-hmm. just fund the, the states. Well, I mean, we'll just give you know California a couple extra dollars, and they can they can do it and put it in their reparations bill. And it's going to happen. <clears throat> it is just going to happen. I feel quite certain about that. All right, let me tell you about uh, Glint. Uh, Glint is something I absolutely love. Um, totally believe in. I think this is such a great idea. Glint uh, has been a sponsor of the show for a while, and. As your dollars are being eroded every day by hyperinflation and low interest rates, uh, saving and spending in real gold with the Glint app and MasterCard, uh, it's becoming even more relevant. It just makes a lot more sense, even than it did before. Um, Frankly, I don't trust the Fed or crypto. I don't trust our banks, stock market, uh, our government. No. No. So I think buying more gold right now, especially gold that I can spend, even at the grocery store, it's just a smart move. And here's where it's getting really exciting for you, because Glint is crowdfunding right now. They want to be a part. They want you to be a part of their future and to grow with them. So just go to republic.co slash Glint to find out more. If you qualify, you can invest in what I believe is the future of money. You know, a lot of people are enthralled with crypto, but I think this is a way better way to go. Just go to republic.co slash glint and get the details to do your own homework. Glint. Buy, save, and spend real gold digitally. Pat Gray Unleashed. 888 3393 and at Pat Unleashed on Twitter. What is the deal with Barack Obama being so prevalent again? He's he's everywhere all of a sudden. 
Yeah, I, I think he wants to. Uh, uh, well, you, we talked mentioned earlier about how he was saying that uh, you know Biden is carrying the torch, you know, carrying on from from his you know the the Obama second administration. So you know, I think he is starting mm-hmm. to get a little a little butt hurt that uh, he's not getting his props. So uh, you know, he wants to remind. So he's got to get back out there. That's right. Yeah, he, he is narcissistic enough. Yeah. To have that be a driver of his actions. Lying, he is. No question. Uh, here's what he had to say about GOP voting laws. And the other piece of good news is that young people actually are on the right side of this. Um, my daughter's generation, they uh, are instinctively inclusive, mm-hmm. appreciate diversity, believe in democracy. Uh, Ugh. We're you know, not a democracy. Tolerant. We're not one. Listen, um, I can't take it. The, but, you know, the question now is, yeah, uh, do we hang uh, on long enough to, for them uh, to inherit uh, the country so that uh, they can keep it on the right track? Um, and some of the behavior that we're seeing right now, I'm trying not to be too partisan here, but mm. frankly, uh, in the aftermath of January 6th, okay. uh, the degree to which oh we were... Gosh. Uh, witness to mm-hmm. an insurrection. Ah! And you had one of the major American political parties. Oh, we have to talk um, about the ad. Oh, I can't take it. Not only fail to condemn some of that behavior, but embrace uh, a patently false uh, narrative about the election being stolen that is being mm. still perpetuated. Um, and now that same major political party being willing to initiate uh, legislative uh, uh, you know, uh, actions uh, across the country, uh, you know, country. where they're saying, uh, 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 you know, we're going to let partisan uh, state legislatures decide uh, whether or not to certify an election uh, and in- institute voter suppression measures that are directly <laughs> targeted, for example, at <laughs> cities in those states I can't take um, that. so that there is a different set of rules for uh, how votes are counted in Atlanta versus how they're counted in the rest of Georgia. Uh, you know, that's the kind of dangerous behavior oh, that we're going to have to push back on. And, oh, and look, gosh. I think the corporate community has a responsibility to, to at least call folks out on that. Um, not be, not when, oh, because okay. I can't take it anymore. Stop. I, when when is anybody going to call him out on this? I know on this dangerous rhetoric that he's talking about the GOP taking the votes away when they're doing nothing of the kind, not in Georgia, not in Texas, not anywhere. They're actually lengthening Correct. the process where you can vote more. You've got more variety of days. You've got a longer period of time in which to place your vote. I know, but here in Texas, <clears throat> Pat, on the last Sunday of early voting, they took an hour away. <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> talk about repressive measures. Yeah, but they opened it up on Sunday, which I don't think they had before. I don't, I'm just telling you that on the last yeah. Sunday yeah, of it's like early voting. Yeah, it's like 1 to 9 all the they other took Sundays. took an hour away. And then the last Sunday is 1 to 8. I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> it's agonizing. It, it is. It's agonizing. It is. And, but and I but think they're getting away with it. They sure are. They most definitely are. And uh, you know he's a you know he's still pushing the uh, one six, uh, really bad. And I, you saw you know the, oh, the story yeah. over the the weekend that Fox News declined to air a commercial. Oh, the end of the world uh, for a network to decline airing a commercial. But it was the uh, the insurrection ad. Yeah, the insurrection ad. Now I do, I watched this insurrection ad. I, I watched the ad, and there was some footage on here I had not seen before. That now, looks bad. That looks bad, yes. Yeah, let's see it. Okay. I'm proud of the officers I worked with on January 6th. They fought extremely hard. Our worst <laughs> nightmare really come true, uh, an attack on American democracy uh, right here in the nation's capital. We're not a democracy. They the most hammer that, brutal, uh, savage, hand-to-hand combat of my entire life. 
I received chemical what? burns to my face that still have not healed to this day. I just remember people still swinging metal poles at us and they were pushing and shoving. They were spraying us with, uh, you know, bear mace and pepper spray. They were all shouting at us, calling us traitors. It's been very difficult seeing out, but... elected officials mm -hmm. and other individuals whitewash the events of that day or, or downplay what happened. As an American and as an Army veteran, it's sad to see us attacked by our fellow citizens. <sighs> oh my gosh. The GOP betrayed America. Uh -huh. Midas Touch is responsible for the content of this We will never forget. He betrayed <laughs> America! <laughs> he played on our fears! <laughs> uh, I, I just... I can't. I know. <laughs> I can't. I know. First of all, we don't know who is doing what there. No, we don't. We don't know if those are leftists. We don't know if they're the Black Flag Operation, Antifa. We don't know if it's right-wing Trump supporters. We don't know who they are. Because there was a mixture in that crowd, and that's been proven. There was a serious mixture. Uh, and to, to, but to make it into... What they're what they've made it into? It's it's incredible. Is absolutely outrageous. It sure is outrageous. And to have the police officer that was crying, mm -hmm. and I mean he's a DC Metro police officer, right? I mean you're supposed to be facing these situations, and, right? Right. Correct. I mean you, you had the city being torn apart all summer long last yes. year. Yes. All summer and fall long. And uh, more people lost their lives yes. during those riots by far, by 10 or 15 or 20 times than lost their life on January 6th. And by the way, the only ones who lost their life were people who died of natural causes or one Trump supporter being shot in the neck by a uh, Capitol Police officer. Uh, the, the, as awful as the rioting uh, crowd was, they didn't kill anybody. They didn't kill anybody. Well, I know, but they they called some of them traitors. And they yelled at them. They they did scream. They at did yell. They yelled at them. Yeah. <laughs> it and it, it probably hurt their feelings. It, I know. They shouldn't it. have done well, that. I know it hurt they the one girl. Should feelings. not have done that. It did hurt her feelings. So I'm going to apologize on their behalf. I'm sorry that they hurt your feelings. You. How much of that apple cider vinegar did you drink? <laughs> Are you okay? You know what? I need to wash the apple cider vinegar down with uh, some Kexi cookies. <laughs> uh, Kexi.com, by the way. Is it, you just have go to go to go the there. website? Yeah, just go to the website, Kexi cookies, and order some, and they'll be delicious. You'll love them. Uh, for Father's Day, got a good sale going on, and the uh, maple bacon cookie, which I think you're going to love. Is that available now? It's available now. Huh. It is indeed. Available now. I don't see any here. No, well, you got to go to Kexi.com and order it, douche. I mean, <laughs> you, I mean, I can't talk about a product what? without the product well, here. Go to kexi.com and order it. All right. <laughs> and who knows? Hey, maybe maybe hey. someone will show up tomorrow. You never know. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we will definitely show up tomorrow. We'll see you then. 888 900 will be the number to call to get involved in the show then. Uh, have a great day. See you tomorrow. Pat Gray. Only on the Blaze Radio Network.